Okay, John the Armchair Tech here. I'm following up on my hilltopping uh, golf cart, my all-terrain golf cart, I guess. I got, I think I got most, pretty much all the wiring in place, uh, more or less, just about. Uh, so this is going to be a final check through before I get to the actually connect the batteries. Uh, so I'm going to go step by step. All right, so the first step is to cut the white wire in the wiring harness, leaving enough on both ends to connect with the butt connector. And that wire <coughs> is here. Uh, so you see one goes in, there's the butt connector, the other end goes off, and then there's the tail. And you want to connect the uh, five and a half inch wire onto the two ends Connect the opposite end onto J3 on the adapter, and right there's J3, the other one is J2. So the next step is to cut the solid blue wire, splice together the blue wire with a 12 inch and 33 inch blue wire, feed the 33 inch wire under, and plug the other end of the 12 inch wire onto J2 of the adapter. So that blue wire is over here. Alright, so there's the blue wire coming out. Um, I've got this 12 inch going up to here. And then a 33 inch here runs through the wiring bundle. ultimately coming here and inside there inside here I use a splice connector to tap it into the uh, the blue wire from the ignition and I used this chart uh, there's the key switch the blue wire and then some stuff online to uh, make sure and also you can see this key switch uh, the blue wire there goes into the back of this uh, multi-step potentiometer which is kind of the speed speed controller which is this guy here and that splice there so that's good so we got the blue wire and the white wires um, next up is to attach motors a1 terminal green wire to the M minus bus bar so A1 is here. There's the green wire. And I'll see if I can get in there close enough. Uh, you can't see it on the plastic, but that is M2 down there. Uh, this paper uh, will show you as well. Or M minus is what it said. M minus eight A two is at the bottom. B minus at the top. There's three in a. Uh, oh, sorry. So so B plus is right there. And then uh, we've got. M minus and B minus, and you can yeah, there. There's the B focused, and there's the the M oh, focus focus. All right. So knowing that, um, I say the green wire goes to M. Uh, the A two terminal white wire. down there to the attach the motors A2 timer a white wire to the B plus bar along with the yellow cable and that is right here and that yellow cable goes to the uh, solenoid and, and this is something uh, 
right here, this step 10. This has solved a lot of problems for me. Before, I had a solenoid over here and a solenoid there is original. And I had three solenoids uh, in, my, in my box, plus the, the new 400 amp one. And as I got towards, I, I eventually decided to, to put that one in place and I used the replacement 200 amp. And as I was trying to wire it up, and I was comparing this wiring diagram, which, uh, which actually shows it there, connecting to the motor, and then the other one, it shows the two solenoids. And I was really confused, because when I get down to this guy, go to the last page here, uh, there was nothing about that second solenoid. There's the one solenoid, the connections, and there's the motor. And there's no second solenoid connecting to it. So this step, once I reread it, um, the second par sentence there, Orn Power Drive, Drive Plus models with the regen solenoid should be removed. It's not used with all tracks controllers. Up to also tape up the two wires. I taped up the two wires and I tucked them in the bundle. I taped them up separately and uh, I cut the little ends off. They're, they're down there somewhere. 11. Install diode IN4001 across contactor with the stripe towards the positive side. And I had to look up what they meant by positive side. The easiest way to do that was uh, back here. Um, uh, they show one connected to blue, two connected to blue-white, so blue 2 is on the top, if I can, but 2 is on the top, and there's the blue-white, and there's the blue, and it's pointing towards 1, the blue, so there's the line there, torn to that, so that's good. Alright, next up, so we got the diode, and step 12, I was not able to do. Install the pre-charge resistor, and I looked through everything in that box. Every nook and cranny could not find it. Actually, it took a long time to find that diode. I never found the resistor. I'm going to have to order that. They're about 10 bucks. 20 if you get Amazon Prime. Alright, F1 lug to motor terminals, F1. Now we're in this motor. It's uh, S1 and S2 instead of F1 and F2. And that was with um, with the orange cable. And there's the orange cable. You can see it on top. And if you look here, uh, yeah, I can see it labeled there once I get F2 on the bottom. You can just barely make out F1. F1's above the orange, and F2 is on the blue. And sure enough, so 14. So F1 is orange, F2 is blue. And I had that on the verify that on the controller. S1 is orange. Yeah, you'll just have to try, take my word that F S2 is blue. Uh, plug back the control. Uh, double check all the wiring. That's what I'm doing now. This vehicle has no tow run switch, and I'm supposed to verify. Uh, a couple other things doesn't quite mention. Uh, right here is B minus, and this black wire. Here and also this one here I, from another diagram. I and also it even says negative. These two will go there. This black wire is just passed through to here. And let me. Yeah. So on this diagram, from B plus, you have the yellow wire. Uh, going alongside too. 
is up there. And then you have a main contactor going through a fuse to the positive, and I used a red wire for that. And there's the red wire, and it comes out there. Now I had to do a little work with that red wire, and it came up uh, a little bit short. However, I found this other red wire that is uh, about twice as long. So before I do the final hookup, I may switch over to that red wire. And I'll show you why here. All right, so everything I, with that controller is where it's supposed to be. I didn't actually connect the battery wires yet. I'll be doing that next. All right. Okay, my camera battery died just as I was starting to talk about the these batteries, so it's a nice little coincidence. Now, I'm going to zoom in here and show you. There. So the two batteries on the driver's side, they have the negative on the left, positive on the right, and then we have a cross connect from positive to negative. And that's so that's why that's how I laid it out. And this wire, according to here, is the B negative and it goes to the negative side of the battery. So that's what that's what'll go in there. That's the B negative, it comes through out to here. And then you have a cross from positive to negative. And then for, we start to move from the center, we go from a positive to a negative, positive, negative, positive. Okay, so uh, zoom out, positive to negative, positive to negative, positive. And here's where I switch things up. Not with the polarity, but with the actual physical orientation of the battery. And that's because of the shortness of the wire. All right, so we're in here. We go from that positive to a negative that's right beside it. On here, I'm going from this positive, uh, oops, I'm going from that positive to a negative that's on the outside of the cart. And then the rest of it follows suit. Um, going from positive to negative, and that's what this wire is, positive to negative. And then I've got a positive here, which, According to this diagram, that positive goes to a fuse, and let me grab that fuse. Alright, so that fuse will connect onto the battery, and then um, that red wire will go from the fuse to the main contactor, which is through here. And I think. Now that I found that other red wire, before I hook this up, I'm going to uh, go ahead and rotate those batteries around, have the longer wire. I'll need a, um, uh, yeah, and then uh, be just about ready to connect. A um, couple other notes. Uh, this little box here is the onboard charge controller, charge computer. They call it the, um, the onboard computer, and um, it took a while because I, I wasn't quite sure how it went in that hole there. Um, this side made the most sense with the screws, but it didn't make any sense to me to run this gray wire and this black wire uh, from this side through a random hole on the side there. Up. But that black wire and that gray wire, uh, well, there's the gray wire with the fuse. And this is the actual, where the charge connects. Uh, the black wire has got to be in here somewhere, hopefully. Yeah, there's the black wire. And that black wire is going to connect to there. And this red wire... It's supposed to connect to the battery, and I can look at that from the original diagram. 
I'm not too worried about hooking that up just yet because I don't even have a charger. All right, fuse and receptacle. Red comes over there. The same red that's connected to the to the solenoid. And that uh, gray, you see the fuse. And that lines up there. Gray with the fuse. And then a um, a black coming through. into there and that that's supposed to connect to a negative on a battery um, and in, in my case I'm, the way I'm connecting it is right there through that but the uh, the black oh, sorry the black from um, the charge receptacle goes into the computer and then a black comes out which connects to the battery and in this case, we're connecting it here where it says B negative. All right. Other than I want to swap out the red wire with that one uh, because it's longer, so I can rearrange these batteries physically, uh, and the resistor across those two big lugs, I am feeling pretty confident. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do the actual connectivity of the batteries, everything except hooking it up, and then, you know, do the, the final, I'll hook everything up just short of that, uh, I guess, the, the fuse, or maybe I'll leave the negative off uh, to, to the very last. Uh, I'm not going to actually hook up that charge receptacle. It screws into the body. Um, yeah, it screws into the battery body here, uh, up right there. So that's here's where the seat lays, so you can see the batteries. And there's your receptacle. And uh, and this here will hold the forward and reverse switch. And I will hook. I'm not sure what that does, but maybe that's the horn. And there's another button for the horn. Speaking of the forward and reverse switch, sitting, uh, let me find it. That's one more thing I gotta hook up. This is the forward and reverse switch. I will hook it up because I need that to test. And there are the uh, terminals that go onto it. Uh, three term, you know, three, uh, three connectors, three spades. I'll get that hooked up. The um, the color code is right there. White, red, white, and blue. And that matches up. White, red, white, and blue. That matches up. So that'll be easy to connect. Um, one other thing. So I was doing all that work uh, on this with a 10 millimeter socket turning all these screws here and uh, I went to get some more of them and I took one with me and well what it turned out is that those are not 10 millimeter because the 10 millimeter uh, bolts like that come with a M uh, a 6 dash 10 or uh, thread and these have a 1 quarter slot dash 20 so I took the one with me back to the sockets socket area of the tool store, and it turns out it's a 3 8 So I've been screwing 3 8 in with it. And I couldn't find any uh, 3 8 one quarter. I couldn't find anything with a 3 8 head, except for some grade 8 uh, flange bolts, which were like a dollar a piece. I didn't want those. So <laughs> since I had been using a 10 millimeter for everything, I went ahead and I got some 10 milli uh, for... I picked up some 10 millimeter, and that's what's actually there. That's hold, holding it as a 10 millimeter. That's 10 millimeter. I wouldn't be surprised if what came with these Duracell batteries are 10 millimeter. Uh, so it's mixing and matching, and which isn't the greatest because you'll be bouncing between those two tools. Uh, but um, it is what it is. And uh, I had enough bolts to screw into the pre-drilled holes, so I was happy there. The only, like I said, oh, 
one other thing uh, with wires. Uh, so those three wires, uh, green, black, black, and red, are not supposed to be cooked up. I actually went ahead and unclipped the metal portion uh, that was exposed, and I'll tape those off. And over here is what it would connect to, and that's the speed sensor. But according to the Altrax directions, it does not use the speed sensor. Uh, I may do some more research. If that speed sensor tells me how fast I'm going, that'd be cool. But I think it really just tells me the RPMs. I, I haven't done enough, I've done any real research on that yet, but uh, that'll be... I, it would be nice if I had a speedometer on here. What I do have is just a, a battery indicator. Um, I don't, might have to use a phone with GPS for speed. <laughs> In fact, I have a really old GPS that I may just uh, connect there, and that could just give me my speed as a dashboard. There's some stuff that came. There's some other stuff. There's a 12 volt lighter and stuff, and in the box is a 48 volt to 12 volt uh, converter. I'm not worried about that yet. Not until I start putting the uh, rest is together and then there's a bunch of stuff up here for lights which I'm not worried about uh, so alright so that's gonna end this video I'll combine the last video and this video together and my next video unless I cause a massive fire and blow everything up I'll be uh, I'll have the batteries hooked up and I'll be testing I wanted to show a number of these cables that came with it have different size uh, connectors on each end, openings. And what I need is a 5 16 or a. And uh, so, uh, easy way to do that, and I say easy, but it's actually a little tricky. You want to get a drill on low speed, but find a little block of wood. And I dug one out of the fire pit and go really slow. May catch there, so you really need a good grip on it. I tried with a pair of uh, like a clamp, and this is a 516 drill bit. And I'll show here uh, until you put that on, it doesn't go down. Now, a little word of warning. This is not a, actually the best idea. Uh, permanently, uh, this could be a problem. Uh, yeah. Uh, what you really want is to get is to get proper cables with proper uh, ends on them. And uh, these cables are probably like six gauge. And you want for 48 volt, you probably want a four gauge wire, like which is what this is. Or two and uh, I'm gonna order those but first I want to actually see this thing work uh, before I you know spend because a good set of like two gate wires could be uh, you, you look at 50 bucks 70 50 bucks for four gauge and uh, 75 for two gauge or actually but maybe closer to a hundred uh, to do some more looking but yeah you this is this will be enough to make the connections, get me 48 volts, and to see it working, give it a small test run, don't go too crazy. And then, uh, yeah, and then I'll get, once I'm a little bit happy with that, then I'll order proper cables, or heav heavier duty cables. These would probably work fine for 9% um, of the time, but they might get a bit warm when I'm putting it under load, and that's what I want to avoid. I could probably run these for a couple years. Or, or a bunch of uh, simple trips, but if I start doing hauling stuff or taking it up heavy hills and stuff, they might start getting a little too warm and cause problems that way. Uh, you know, I've had I've had some wires like hooked up to a solenoid on my other uh, on my dune buggy. Uh, that one it would get hot and the rub the rubber would melt, so I want to avoid that. But, but yeah, for now I'm having to. I've had to do it about five or six times. 
I had to make these uh, on the solenoid bigger, um, but I think those are fine. This red wire, I'm going to make that a thicker, definitely make that a thicker wire once it's all said and done, as well as the black wire connecting to it. I definitely want those. The ones in between, uh, you can get away with a little bit less, but because um, they're shorter runs and they're not taking the full run of the current, but I'll, set, I'll, I'll upgrade afterwards once, once it's running. All right, we got everything connected except for this last wire. So, here, and the key is turned off. No explosions. Let's see what happens if I turn the key, if anything pops. Absolutely nothing happened there. Um, nothing exploded here. My battery lighter didn't indicate. I expected something to happen. Something somewhere. Well, let's go ahead and pause. Alright, nothing happened, so I'm going to go ahead and test some things out here. Alright, each battery should be 8 volts, 8.23. So when I connect to the next one, it should be about 16, 16.46. The next one will add 8 volts, giving us the 24. I got 24.6. Next one will get us to 32. I got 32.8. Then um, gives us to 42. And for yeah, next one will be there 41, and then ultimately 48. I'm hitting 49, and that's through the resistor. So we got voltage to all our stuff. And now I'm going to measure. To my solenoid, I got the 49. Nothing's crossing that. Voltage wise, batteries are good, the hookups are good. And I say if there's a problem, it's going to be up front where the key is. All right, I have success. Took a lot of looking, but on this diagram, there's a little red-white wire, which says it goes to a fused red-white to the tow run switch. Earlier, I may have said I didn't have a tow run switch, and I don't. However, right here is a red-white and a black wire, which uh, suspiciously looks like that, red-white, black, and a connector for a switch. So that needed connected. But there was one more thing. So that red white wire, there's one red white wire back here that I didn't have any clue where it went. And then I, but once I looked at that diagram, I realized it went to the positive of the battery. And so there it is. Now, We get clicks, I hear the solenoid bleep bleep, and right now, this is in the switch, I'm going to set it to reverse, and the buzzer beeps, but it's actually going to go forward. And if I flip it the other way, it kind of goes in, 
it doesn't uh, completely stop. You have to pull up on the handle. Alright, let me move this forward again. Which is backwards. That is so quiet. So, what I've learned is I need to order a go run switch, a tow run switch, and there was in the instructions, it talked about this backwards behavior. And it said, uh, verify form reverse slowly while still on jacks. I wasn't on jacks. <laughs> if the car runs backwards when in forward, reverse F1 and F2 wires at the controller. I'll do that next and we'll restart the video. All right, I reversed them. So I'm gonna press go. The car moves. And I don't think I'll go anywhere when it's just, a, that's like neutral. Okay. <laughs> what I wasn't getting before was the solenoid turning on when I turned the key. And I wasn't getting any voltage at the ignition, any of the wires. But now I've got ignition. Um, so a couple... Uh, I got ignition and everything seems to work. I don't know if the brakes work. We'll have to see if that's connected. But uh, I think we're good for a beginning. All right, so a couple follow-ups. One, uh, connecting that wire there, I did not like it. I had to split the ring to make it fit. Uh, it would have fit on the old solenoid. Um, so I'll probably look at a, a, a better a 3 8 lug that will crimp down to that size wire. It also says there's supposed to be a 60 or a 10 amp fuse. 60 volt, 10 amp fuse capable. And I don't see it. I mean, there is one on this onboard controller, but uh, it's not in the wiring diagram. So I'm probably gonna replace, have that wire jump into a wire with a fuse, an inline fuse, and then going to a 3 8 lug. Um, and as I said before, I do want to bump up these uh, these wires to something more, a little more powerful, uh, or a little heavier duty. And I'll probably do the same, same thing with the red wire going to the back, that yellow wire, maybe, and uh, and the black wire. Uh, that might be a little bit down the road, but I do want to replace this uh, black one wire, this red white wire that goes to the tow run switch. And I need a proper tow run switch. I have a little wire in there. And what that wire does, when that's connected, it, when that's connected, uh, that will, and then you flip the ignition, that's what act, actually, when that's connected, that provides power to the ignition, which then activates that solenoid, which then powers up the controller. I may have that a little bit off, but that's generally what goes on. All right, um, my next step is I'm going to clean all this, all these tools up, get them all out of the way, put the seat on, put the body on, the, the, fa the, the body that holds the seat in place, and I'm going to take this out in the yard. Uh, I call it wife acceptance factor. Uh, this did not really meet the wife acceptance factor. Uh, however, it may, well, that, that may improve if she actually sees me driving it around uh, after... Uh, this was a full day's work. I had a couple little uh, starts here and there, but uh, today was the day I really put the effort in to get it going. All right, this is John, the armchair technician, and uh, thanks for watching. There'll, there'll be more to come. All right, buddy, we're going to ride. We're going to ride. Pass the
turn off the camera.